Hi my cyber babies, welcome to our YouTube channel on the Mother Love Show. This handsome fella is Timothy Allen Smith. He is a playwright and an author. His new book, Regret, is about a strong black woman who is trying to do everything she can to take care of her daughter. What was the, uh, the, the reason for writing this, and especially from a single mother's point of view? Well, I, I wanted to stretch myself. Mm -hmm. Most of the work that I've done in the past has been very heavily political. Mm -hmm. Very, um, it's always mm -hmm. leaned towards my my activist leanings, and so I wanted to do something that was a little bit lighter, mm -hmm. that was focused more on relationships and and how the mind of a person works when they're put under stress. <gasps> and so there's no more stressful scenario situation than for a single mother to be taking care of her young daughter, and I felt like that relationship needed to be explored. And I felt like that created a richness to the character that allowed me to play a little bit and put her in situations where she would do things that she wouldn't normally do because a mother will do oh, whatever they have to do to take care of her. Trust me, I'm somebody's mother. And there are things when you are a parent that you, I would never do that. I would have, stuff that I would have, I never would have thought I would have done. I would have never thought. In a hundred million years, I'd have moved 3,000 miles away from everybody I knew, everything I knew, to start a life to give our son a better life. Absolutely. They, I've been here 27 years. They still wait for me to come back home. <laughs> I'm like, I'm at home. This is where my laundry is. So when, when, you're, when you're writing these characters, do you, do, does the character come to you full blown before you write the words? What's your process? My process is, I talk to a lot of writers. Mine is different than most. See, why did I know that? And I don't know how it came about. I'm not trained in any real way. I just started writing and I found that I have a knack for telling stories. I write a character. Um, I'll give them a sort of a page or two of my input. Mm -hmm. And then, believe it or not, I just let the character take over from there. And so when I'm writing, and specifically when I'm writing dialogue, I might have an idea in my head, but if the character says something different, I go with what the character says in that moment. Now, how do you get that, fix that in your brain when you're compartmentalizing these different characters? Because all the characters, so far in what I've read, they're all distinctly different. What, and again, I think if there's a talent involved in my writing, that's it. I have the ability, nothing that I've done myself to train that muscle, it's just there. Mm -hmm. I have the ability to compartmentalize and, and create characters that are distinct. And I think, most of that comes from my ability to listen. Mm -hmm. And so there's a communicative rhythm that people have just naturally, and I'm able to pick up on how you sound different than I do mm -hmm. versus someone else, and I incorporate all those things and just let the characters tell the story, and I try not to get in the way. <laughs> I'm always in the way of my own self because I listen, only listen to the voices in my head. That's why I'm spastic. So now here you are. You're, you're, you're writing another book about teenage girls. You have a seven-year-old daughter. How is that going to balance you out when teenagers make you realize why some species eat their young? Yes. <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. She's seven. And I have friends who have kids that are a little bit older. Mm -hmm. Everyone I know that has a daughter says the same thing. Enjoy it until they're 13. Oh. <laughs> and that's when it all changes and your little girl becomes this... This monster. This evil, insane, and you're like, what kind of, who, who am I going to wake up? Who's going to wake up and come out that room today? So I'm enjoying it now. Yes. Because she's daddy's girl. Yes, she is. Is she a daddy's yes, girl? You got to spoil rotten. Very much so. Oh, my goodness. And would you, would you have more children? I think I'm good with the one. <laughs> um, I got really lucky. I have a beautiful daughter. She's a really good kid, but I think I'm good with the one. Um, <laughs> you sound like me. I just wanted to see if my body worked. It did. It and hurt. I'm good. Yeah. It hurt. That was painful. And they always say, oh, well, after you have the baby, you'll forget about the labor pain. My son is almost 40. And no, I did not forget <laughs> about the pain. I understand why parents say stuff like this to your children. I bought you here. I take you out. <laughs> because it, comes, it gets to that. It you know, gets to that. You enjoy it while you can. Absolutely. And I remember when I was a teenager, I thought my mother was like the stupidest oh, person on the face of the planet. Oh, yeah. Did you get, go through that and go, who I think is we this all woman? Did, right? You know, the teenagers are the dumbest, smart people in the world. Stupid! 
stupid as smart people. I mean, and then they want to challenge you. Yeah. They want to tell you what to do with your money. I remember <laughs> we used to do that all the time. And my mother would be like, get out of my face. Matter of fact, why don't you leave now while you know everything? I'm like, but I'm 15. <laughs> get out. It's studio with me. It's Timothy Allen Smith. And when we come back, we're going to talk about Love Jones, the musical.